Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery, and these are all the books that I will hopefully be getting to in March. First off, I just want to say sorry if you can hear raining. It is currently raining outside. This is the only time I have currently to film with my busy school schedule, so hopefully the light rain in the background is comforting for you. <laughs> so, March. Today is actually March 1st, so March has already started. I already read a book today. I have already completed a book so far in March. Um, it's gonna be on this TBR because I already put it on there. So we have a bunch of things this month. I have to pick for my TBR jar. I have a buddy read and we have a readathon that I am helping co-host. So let's get into all the books that I will hopefully be reading this month. First, let's start with my TBR jar pick right here. If you did not know, I have a goal for 2021 to pick one book from this jar every single month and then Whatever book I pick, I have to read it and do a dedicated reading vlog for it. Um, last month, I did a series of unfortunate events. The first book, The Bad Beginning by Lemony Snicket. That was so much fun. And I got to read a book that I probably, like, probably would have put off for a long time if I did not pick it out of this jar, but I still wanted to read it, you know? I just probably would have put it off for a while. I'm hoping that this book is another good pick. Uh, so let's, let's do it. Okay, let's pick whatever this one is. Let's see. Okay, okay, we have, ooh, can you even read that? It says Heartless by Kat Martin. This is a historical romance. I like have color coded all of my books. So the purple hearts, I don't know if you can even see that. It's probably really blown out. The purple hearts are historical romances. So let me go to my historical romance section. Okay, so this is Heartless by Kat Martin. I have a few Kat Martins. I've never read one though. And this was the first one that I bought. I think I bought it um at a half price books one day because look at that cover like look at it that is gorgeous this one does not have a step back but i feel like the couple on the cover just like makes up for it <laughs> so let's read the summary because i know nothing about this book to escape her life of poverty as a tenant farmer's daughter ariel summers made a bargain with the devil she would become the earl of gray fields gray gray bills the gray bills there you go mistress in exchange for the schooling and refinements of a lady but she couldn't foresee the earl's untimely death or her own disturbing attraction to his bastard son and heir justin ross justin never meant to demand payment from the tempting young woman his father so callously planned to ruin but her innocent allure provoked his ruthless nature and he vowed he would have her in his bed seduction was his plan but the earl of Greyville never suspected Ariel's innocent passion would awaken emotions he had long believed dead. When mistrust and betrayal threaten the fragile happiness that the two of them have found, Justin must convince Ariel he isn't the heartless man she believes. Okay, very interesting. I'll have to look this up on Goodreads and see if any of my friends read it. If you've read this book, please let me know. Uh, so expect a dedicated reading vlog for this book sometime in March or at the beginning of April. I'm very interested. I've never like heard of a historical romance like this before. Um, so it looks like she was married to like his dad. Then she falls for the son whenever the dad dies. So quite interesting. I feel like this could be a very action-packed historical. So kind of excited, kind of nervous again. <laughs> okay, so next I have my buddy read for March. I asked my lovely friend Zay over at Wendy Reads on Instagram if she wanted to buddy read a book with me and I asked her if she had Kindle Unlimited and she said yes. One of my goals for the year was to read more books on Kindle Unlimited to utilize my subscription service more. So I like <laughs> screen recorded. I should have just probably sent her my Amazon list instead of screen recording the list, but I just scrolled through my Kindle Unlimited list that I have on Amazon. We both agreed on Rustic Hearts by Amber Kelly. I first heard about this book from Shelby from Shelby Taggart Reads whenever she used to make YouTube videos. I love her so much and if you're not following her on Instagram I'll link her down below. She's not making YouTube videos anymore but she, her bookstagram is absolutely amazing. So I heard about this book from her and she loves it. So that's why I put it on my Kindle Unlimited TBR. Zay said she really wanted to read it too so we're gonna read it together and hopefully we both love it. So it looks like our main character Sophie is going back to her I believe hometown that holds a bunch of painful memories and unanswered questions. She has not come back to the town in 20 years, but then she gets a phone call. I don't know what it was about, but she has to go back. And then she bumps into Braxton Young. Maybe they have a history, it doesn't really say, but she's not in town to fall in love but she might end up falling in love with Braxton. So I think this might be second chance romance. I'm not really sure. It doesn't say that they like were already together beforehand. Um, maybe she was just like in her past. I don't know if they dated before. I've just heard amazing things about this book. I 
don't know a lot about the book besides what I just said. Just a girl going back to her hometown that she doesn't want to go back to because it has a bunch of painful memories. Um, maybe Braxton is involved in those painful memories. Who knows? I am very excited to read this book with Zay. I am so excited. The cover is just gorgeous and I've heard great things about this book. The readathon that I have going on or we all have going on um, in March is the Kindle Clear Readathon Round 2. This was originally hosted and created by Brie from In Love and Words, but um, she's having kind of a busy schedule recently, and so Jen from The Book Refuge asked if she could um, help put it all together all over again, and so uh, Jen has kind of put this all together, which was super cool and sweet of her. Um, and she asked all of our previous hosts to come back as well as some new ones. Um, I will link everybody down below that's going to be a host for this readathon. But this is a readathon that happens from March 13th to March 19th. And then we have a live show on March 20th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Jen's channel. And so this is just a week long readathon where you read all of the backlist ebooks or audiobooks that you just haven't gotten to on your e reader or your phone, your Kindle Unlimited service, whatever. Okay, so whenever I originally agreed to host this readathon to co host it, it was before Snowpocalypse hit. If you did not know, you can go watch my, um, a Quarter of Silver Flames video and I like break down my experience of going through Snowpocalypse basically in in Texas specifically well all like the south but specifically Texas like was hit very hard with a snowstorm that lasted four days and power was out no school for an entire week because there was no wi-fi no internet you couldn't go to campus you couldn't get on your computer you couldn't charge your computer you know like there was no school for a whole entire week and so all of our assignments and everything got pushed back and so originally i had no major assignments or exams that week they got pushed back <laughs> so i believe i have two exams in that week which will be my main focus, obviously. So I don't know actually how many books I will be getting to for this readathon, but you know what? I put a tentative TBR for myself. I am not gonna be following the prompts. If you would like to know the prompts, you can go watch Jen's uh, announcement video that I'll link down below as well as she has templates on her Instagram, which I will also link down below. Um, she has a bunch of information and everything and all of the prompts and you can make your own bingo board which really fun really fun i will say there's one prompt that a bunch of people i have learned are very stumped on and that is the disability square when brie originally made this readathon that was something that we really wanted on there because both brie and i have a disability and we need more representation and i feel like that is rarely a prompt in a readathon you very rarely see disability rep in a a challenge to complete read a book with a disability rep in it you know and so um, I highly encourage you to pick up a book with disability rep I have two recommendation videos that are linked down below go watch them please I think altogether there are 20 recommendations for you of books that have disability rep in them so I highly encourage that you pick that prompt because I feel like there just needs to be more diversity when it comes to disabilities or people acknowledging disability representation more so just want to put my PSA out there <laughs> so I have one two three four five books that are tentatively on my TBR if you didn't know I'm a very big mood reader but I don't like to like force myself to read certain books I give myself like a list of books that hopefully I will get to I don't need to you know I like to make a giant list so I can pick and choose from that list okay so first on there we have Barbarian's Bride by Ruby Dixon this is the newest release by her in the Ice Home series I believe it's the Ice Home series or the Ice Pen Barbarian series I'm pretty sure it's the Ice Home series um, this is her alien romance series that I am obsessed with and so this is the new one that just came out and so I am definitely going to be reading that one or hopefully definitely going to be reading that one because it's been on my kindle since it was released so it's been on there for a while i got this one off of kindle limited i'm not going to say too much about it i go into her books very blind but the cover was absolutely stunning and so i'm very excited for that one um next we have the initiation by nikki sloan i am not reading the summary for this one because i'm going in very blind all i know is that this book is freaking nuts okay it's nuts people just told me to go in blind for this book so that's what i'm doing the only thing like i know for sure about this book is that this woman like is trying to get into this company or something like that and like it's just to go into a boardroom with a bunch of men and so I like I kind of like 
can like assume what's going to happen in that boardroom but like I don't know and so I know basically nothing about this book so I'm gonna keep it that way <laughs> okay so while I was browsing Kindle Unlimited one day I came across this book and it's been on my Kindle Unlimited um, for a very long time we have claiming Cinderella a steamy older man younger woman romance by Lauren Milson this is like a Valentine's related romance which it's not Valentine's Day but you know what we're fine we're gonna still read it I believe this is a uh, romance between a woman and or a young woman and um, her dad's best friend it's very short it's only 49 pages. I love age gap romances so hopefully this is a book that I can recommend to y'all that's an age gap romance because I know that a bunch of people love age gap romances too. The next one I have is Sweet Filthy Boy by Christina Lauren. Now this one was actually I believe either a birthday or a Christmas present. I think it was a birthday present from Brie from 11 Words. She got this for me and I was trying to find books on my Kindle that I could also find the audios for and this is one of them. I also love Christina Lauren. The author duo is amazing and um brie absolutely loves this book so hopefully i do too apparently this book is about three young women who meet three hot guys in vegas i think this is a one night stand to more romance in vegas i feel like that's all the description is giving me brie loves this book so hopefully i do too okay another <laughs> brie favorite i just feel like i'm gushing about brie right now um but she loves brooklyn air by serena bowen and um i really want to read this i read the um first book and maybe some of the second book in the brooklyn bruiser series i think this is number four in the series but i think she said that you could also read it as a standalone so and this is also a book that i can read on audio like listen to it as well i think this is a romance between like the uh, the owner of a um hockey team like the owner of the brooklyn bruisers and him falling for or he has an unrequited crush on his assistant um so it's like a workplace romance and i've heard amazing things about this book from everybody who has read it so very excited for this one as well so those are five books that i will hopefully be reading during the kindle clear readathon again i believe i have two exams that week so things may change i may not actually <laughs> read anything which is sad I want to I'll definitely be listening to those audiobooks while I walk to class and everything so if anything if I film myself or I'm gonna vlog myself it's gonna be quite a short vlog probably <laughs> and of course I have other books that I want to read on top of all of the books I just said I also want to reread a book this month um if you watched my favorite books of all time video I believe that was the last video I posted if you watched that video uh you saw that I talked about the problem with forever by Jennifer L Armentrout I haven't read this book in a very long time and so I was like I might as well just reread it because I was in the mood for it I'm currently um like 60 percent of the way through it and uh this book is quite different from what i remember i know that this book would probably be hated by a bunch of people but you know what i i love it <laughs> it's not for everybody i understand it is not for everybody but it is for me this book is about mallory this is like this book takes place in high school i don't know if it's new adult or young adult i don't really know um but this one takes place in high school and mallory um she grew up in the foster care system she was abused when she was a kid and then when she's like 13 she goes to hos the hospital because something happened in her foster home and the doctors there um end up forming like a, re a relationship with her and um, one of the doctors ends up adopting her and it's been years since then and um her senior year of high school she wants to like not be homeschooled anymore she wants to go to actual high school but ever since like she was a little girl like she um has been like selectively mute um or she has ptsd when it comes to talking and like using her voice because she had a she was told um, when she was in her foster home like not to talk like be quiet be silent and so that's been like ingrained in her brain and so it's very hard for her to talk and communicate with people so her first day of high school she comes across writer who may or may not be her foster brother from that home she used to be in it is a possible romance between the two of them um, I personally love this book. I know that it's not for a lot of people. I love it. And so I really wanted to reread it. And so I'm currently listening to that one. We're going to stop the video for a second. And I want to implement a new shout out mug. I got this wonderful Disney princess mug for Christmas from my lovely, beautiful friend, Hannah Grace. So I decided to um, write down everybody that I'm subscribed to, whether they're big or small when it comes to booktube. And I put their names all in this mug. And I'm going to... Hopefully, I'll try every video. If not, whenever I do remember, I will shout out somebody from my shout out mug. So, 
let's pick somebody. Let's do this one. This one is, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh my goodness. We have Steph from Neffa. Can you see? Neffa Entertainment. Um, Steph just got back into making booktube videos. She has like her coming back video. I forget which what the title of the video is but uh she took a little bit of a hiatus because she had a hard time reading in 2020 and so she really wanted to revamp her channel and um just add more things to it as well as reading and i absolutely adore her if you love like fun editing and like just funny people like steph is so sweet and kind and just hilarious and i love her her editing style is I, I love it. I love it. Um, I just have so much fun when I watch one of her videos and I immediately like click on it whenever she uploads. She also started an ASMR channel, which I did not know until I watched her like coming back to booktube video. Um, and I subscribed to that one too because I, I love ASMR. So <laughs> I love her videos there too. So I'll link both of her channels down below for you. I absolutely adore Steph so much. Please go check her out. She reads like a wide range of things. Uh, I believe her favorite book is Sadie by Courtney Summers. So if you're into that book, I really recommend go checking her out. I love her so much. Not gonna lie, most of these books on the rest of this list are holds from my Libby that are finally coming in or will be hopefully coming in in March. So first we have Beautiful Boss by Christina Lauren and this is book number, I believe like 4.5 or 5.5, a part of the Beautiful Bastard series. I'm reading this these books in order obviously and so far I've been reading like one a month and so this is the next book. This is a novella part of the series. These are mainly office romances that are really freaking steamy and so I don't know the summary for this one because it is a novella a part of the series. Just know that office romance series that is quite steamy. First book is Beautiful Bastard. If you want to know what the series is about go check out Beautiful Bastard. Then we have a book that everybody has been dying for me to read. We have Dearest Rogue by Elizabeth Hoyt. Here is the very beautiful step back in here. This has been sitting in my purse for a while um, and I just haven't picked it up yet but I just got the audiobook in from Libby so I'm gonna be listening to it as well as uh, marking the book up hopefully. Everyone's been recommending this book to me because it is a book where the heroine is blind and so it has disability rep in there. My only issue in here is I believe it's like book number eight in a historical romance series and I love to read my historical romances in order but like I think I looked into the first couple books in this series and like I just was not interested in them you know and so hopefully this is fine <laughs> that I haven't read the other ones in the series but all I know about this book is that our heroine is blind and I believe she falls over her bodyguard. I am super excited about that that's all I need to know about it and I can't wait to pick this one up in March. Next I have Return to Us by Corinne Michaels. Um, I'm planning on reading this book because I received an arc for it um, like the publisher reached out to me and sent me this book and so I'm very excited to get to this one. So the very brief summary that's on Goodreads says, this is a small town second chance romance. First book in the Willow Creek Valley series, Grayson Parkerson watched Jessica Walker leave 18 years ago without looking back. He thought he was over her, raising his four-year-old daughter on his own and doing just fine until she returns. She thought her heart could handle seeing him again, but she was wrong. Will they be able to let go of the past and return to what has always been lingering? So, second chance romances. I actually really like second chance romances. So, um, hopefully I really like this one as well. So, next we have a manga, <laughs> which is very different for me. Uh, we have Food Wars by Yuto, I don't, I don't even want to try, never mind, no, this is the cover for Food Wars. <laughs> okay, so I've been watching, obviously, Tamika from Library of Tomes and um, Izzy from Happy For Now talk about manga, like, for months now, and I just have felt so left out, and I kind of want to get into it, but I'm only really interested in, like, the, like, romance, like, steamy ones. I'm interested in those ones. I'm not really interested in, like, not romance ones and like i i think i heard both of them talk about how this series is like like a romance manga i think i think hopefully i'm right um <laughs> please let me know if i'm not and so i just wanted to try out a manga because i've never had before i think one time i tried to get into like a manga and it was just really confusing for me so hopefully it's fine. Oh, I want to, I want to like it because I want to live romance in all different forms. You know, this is coming in through my um, Libby very soon. So hopefully this has romance in it because I don't know what I'm going to do if it doesn't. Probably DNF it. <laughs> okay, next I have the next book in the Spindle Cove series by Tessa Dare. We have A Lady by Midnight and this is yeah, the third book in the Spindle Cove series. And this one is about Corporal Thorne and Kate 
and we've kind of seen them like throughout the series. I'm pretty sure if I'm thinking about the same characters, um, we've like seen them kind of like had lingering glances at one another, if you know what I mean, uh, throughout the series. Uh, so I'm very excited for this. I'm not gonna talk about this book because again, third in a series, but I love Tessa Dare so much. And so I have to get that book for my collection because I don't have that one up here yet. I have this one, I believe coming in on Libby very soon. Next, I have The Alien Assassin's Convenient Wife by Ruby Dixon. This is the book that I have already completed this month. I completed it today. This is an alien romance book. I am reading all of Ruby Dixon's books in publication order besides The Ice Pen of Variants and The Ice Home books because I'm caught up to date in those series. And so I'm reading all of her backlist in publication order. So this was the next one in that list of books. Um, and this one is just a romance about an alien who comes to Earth to assassinate somebody he's been hired to assassinate and a different alien has come on earth and he's like hiding within like humans so he's trying to like find him and kill him to earn his money and so um he finds that the alien that he's trying to assassinate is in this like married couples retreat and you can't get into the married couples retreat unless you're a married couple and so he like turns to a dating app to try and find somebody to marry him our heroine like somehow like gets roped into all of this. Anyways, you'll know my thoughts in my um, March wrap up, but that was in my TBR as well. Next I have Call Me Maybe by Cara Bastone. This one is an Audible original. I had to resubscribe to Audible um, because I needed to listen to one of my school required reads that was too big and long for me to read physically. And so I had to get my Audible subscription service back when I didn't really want to because Audible Escape is gone. And so um, with my subscription, I get all of the books. I get some Audible original books, I'm pretty sure, for like free. Um, and so this is one of them. I heard Brie from Love and Words. She really liked this book and it's very short. And so that's why I downloaded it. I honestly don't know anything about it. I'm just gonna go into this one blind because Brie said that the audiobook was fantastic. So I really trust Brie and her opinion. So... Yeah. <laughs> then we have a book that I started in um, February and just didn't get to finish. So you'll see this book kind of in my fantasy romance February or Pharaoh Feb reading vlog that will be coming out in the next couple of days. But I did not finish Bride of the Sea by Emma Hamm. And I'm like this far the way into it. And I have to read this one physically because I don't think there's an audiobook. I haven't even looked into it. This is a Little Mermaid retelling and um, so far I'm really enjoying it. Um, I read this during the snowpocalypse. Uh, before A Court of Frost and Starlight came out and so um, I couldn't read anything digitally or I had no audiobooks and so I had to read a book physically which I rarely do anymore because who has time for that? For me honestly because um, I have so many other things to do and so this is a Little Mermaid retelling fantasy romance book that I am so far really enjoying and so I really wanted to finish it in March. Next are two books that I just got the audiobook in for Libby so I'll be hopefully listening to these two. I'm trying to read more books that are on my physical TBR and so I found two books on Libby that are on my physical TBR that I have not read yet. First we have uh, The Royal We by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan. I know nothing about this book except that it is a romance based off of William and Kate. I've heard great things about this book. I believe the second book just came out in the series and this book is kind of chunky and so I really want to get some chunky books off of my TBR cart so I thought this would be a great pick. All I know is that it is a romance based off of William and Kate that I've heard pretty great things about. And then we have Only a Breath Apart by Katie McGarry. This is a YA novel I'm pretty sure um, and the I picked this one up because of the pretty cover. I thought the cover was really pretty. And so this one says, Jesse is cursed. So the town folklore says, but the only curse Jesse believes in is his grandmother's will. In order to inherit his family farm, he must win the approval of his childhood best friend, the girl he froze out his freshman year, Scarlett Copeland. Scarlett Copeland is psychic. Glory Gardner tells Scarlett she has hidden psychic abilities, but Scarlett knows what is real is Scarlett's father's irrational fears, controlling attitude, and the dark secrets at home. Scarlett may have a way to escape, but she'll have to rely on the one person she used to trust, the same boy who broke her heart, Jesse. Each midnight meeting pushes Jesse and Scarlett to confront their secrets and their feelings for one another, but as 
love blooms the curse rears its ugly head so that sounded really interesting to me again trying to get books off of my tbr cart so um found the audiobook for that one and then the last book that is on this tbr is baking me crazy by carlos Sorensen. i got this one off of kindle unlimited and the reason why i picked this one up is because i heard that it has disability representation in it and if you didn't know i'm an advocate for that i love disability rep in my books as i talked about earlier in this video and so um i've been trying to hopefully be reading one a month trying to find more i luckily found this like page and website and art and a certain article where it like lists a bunch of romances on KU and so I put that in a list on Goodreads for me to look at but hopefully I will be getting to very soon. The summary for this one is Life Lessons from Levi Butchnin. If you're going to fall in love with your best friend make sure you have the patience of a freaking saint. Levi knew Jocelyn Abernathy was the one the day he met her and she kicked his butt on the basketball court. He also knew she wanted nothing to do with the romance and for very good reasons. So what did he do? He was the best friend she needed for five long years. The day Joss comes to tell her best friend that she's ready for love with another guy, it's like a punch to his, well, you know. How does he show her that the real love in her life isn't some random guy she bu who bought her a pickle cupcake at a bakery? Well, he needs to wage war. One touch, one moment in time, Joss isn't the only stubborn one in their friendship and he'll prove that the man for her has been right in front of her this whole time. I've heard great things about Carlos Sorensen. I haven't really heard a lot about this book specifically. If you have read it, please let me know. So I don't remember what the disability rep is in here, but let me check. So this book is a friend's still of romance where the heroine is in a wheelchair. That's all it says. That's all the disability rep stated in here is that our heroine is in a wheelchair. I don't know why, but I'm very excited for this book. I need more books with disability rep in them. So there you have it. That is my very lengthy <laughs> March TBR. Um, hopefully I'll be getting to some of these. Then again, this is just a list of books that I should be picking and choosing from. I don't need to read all of them. It's okay if I don't. I need to remind myself that <laughs> um, because I'm a big list person and I want to complete everything on the list that I make. But you know what? I don't know if that's possible with the heavy schoolwork that I have in March. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.